joining. Okay. Hey, everybody. It is the first uh, of October. Uh, welcome to fall, I guess. Suppose and the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter of the year, business-wise, for all of us. And uh, really glad that you're here for our Elevation Call. And just a reminder, we do this call the first and third Sunday nights of each month. And on a month that we have five Sundays, we don't do an extra one. No, nope. right. it just happens to fall that way. So this is first and third. Uh, we've been doing this for quite a while now, haven't we? We have for a minute. We've been doing this for a number of years. And um, so anyway, glad that y'all are here. Um, so what we want to start with tonight, we just finished another month. So we have the first of the month and we just ended a month. And, you know, all biz I think any business that, especially a, a business that moves a product of some kind, whether it's a service product or an actual product consumable like what we have, um, the entire company looks at the end of the month as a really uh, key time, a critical time. And so we just finished the end of the month. In a business like ours, in direct selling, there, you know, I look on the screen tonight, there's 15 people right now and more are coming on every minute. So that's 15 individual businesses. Literally, you all are all individual. And some of you have just started. Some of you have been around a while. Um, we, so we're an individual business separate from Zelis within Zelis. All of you are have your own. And we teach on that. But that's the principle. Um, so everybody has an end of the month. Your business has your own version of your end of the month. And if you treat it like that, then you, you know, then you address things at the end of the month and throughout the month. But we do what's called closing the end of the month. And if there's goals that you have or that the company's provided you some incentives to close your business strong, which ultimately then impacts the larger business, whether it be Zelis or us as a team leader, then we're helping you close your business strong at the end of the month and achieve the goals that you've set out to do that. Um, and so just it's just a reminder that every single month is an individual unit within your individual business, within our business, within your team's business, within Zelisa's business. And so we talk about starting the month strong and we talk about being consistent during the month. And then we talk about closing the month strong. And so um, a lot of times what that looks like for us is two things primarily looking at enrollments, bringing in new people, maybe you've been working with throughout the month um, to get them started, not to press them, but you have a goal to close the month. And, and, and especially if they're incentivizing us like they did this month, certain, you know, you get extra pay on some things, some um, when we enroll people and have certain volume. So, and that's for everybody. It's not just us. I mean, it's everybody. They offered it to everyone who could do it. So we try to help you close your month strong. And what's really cool is that we had people working up, like working on their business um, right up to the last hour, like to the last hour. And some of those reached a goal that one, they've never reached before. Others who, what we call re-ranked or reached a goal they'd hit at a peak in the past and they actually hit it again. And we'll talk about that. Um so anyway, just closing the month strong. And we try to help you do that. But you have to be engaged and understand that this is what you're doing for your business as well. I mean, it's it's your business and we try to help you accomplish that. So um, did you want to say anything else? Well, about yeah, because uh, Elevation Call really is a call about business within specifically within Zelis, But it's also um, a call about elevation of our highest self. And I honestly uh, have been in the direct selling industry for quite a few years now, 13 years in one business and seven years with Zelise. And I'm, uh, my background's nursing, you know, so they don't teach you how to do kind of direct selling as a nurse because your patients are kind of your Close vic victims, month. right? Yeah, I see you. You don't want to be yeah, having, they, they don't, hitting the market. Right? I see you. Like people don't, you know, they, you, you, they just, they're there. And so, uh, Anyway, I've never really had to go build a business before. And yet I found myself as a mom with little boys. I, I wanted the time freedom. I didn't want to have to work nights, weekends, holidays as a nurse. And so I wanted something that I didn't have. And when I was introduced to this industry and I was introduced to the whole concept of residual income, that you could actually work really hard for a season 
and continue to get paid and not have to just show up for 12 hour shifts. That was like a whole new concept for me. And so I was really, really wanting the outcome of this thing they talked about called residual income. But in that first business, when I was introduced, I mentioned this on the live that I did the other night, the people who invited me in quit about six weeks later. And so I was part of this team. I was the only member of this team. And I was like a complete orphan, not knowing, like, I didn't know like how to buy or sell or like, I, I just, I didn't understand. I didn't have a, I didn't have a, a real sense of really how the whole business worked. And so what Elevation Call is, is just kind of a way for you to join our team as we, we kind of mastermind. Every single person on this call has been successful in another way in a business, in a career, in a venture, in a platform. So what we do, and I was explaining uh, this earlier today when we were talking with Alice, is that we lock arms to bring the best of what we've done in the past. And we go back to kindergarten as we learn how to do it in a different platform. And so welcome to kindergarten. The end of the month is some of the best lessons in life. And so I wanna encourage you guys to kind of listen to the lesson today because you have a choice as to how you do this business. Some people just wanna be product users. Some people really wanna just be product sharers. You'll hear more about that. But the team builders to me is where you're gonna you're going to learn the biggest life lessons and it's gonna help you on that journey to be your highest self. And one of the ways that we recognize who is on that journey is with the leaderboard. And so every month, Zelise, uh recognizes and actually every day it keeps it i don't know how often dirt throughout the day they recognize uh new enrollments and people that have hit what's called the leaderboard which is the top 25 enrollments uh at the time during the month and then also personal volume uh, orders that have come into the company and so we always on our team we always have people on the leaderboard and it's our goal always mine and lisa's every month to be on the leaderboard which really represents that we're doing our business. That's all it represents, is that every month when we are on the leaderboard, it demonstrates that we personally are doing our personal business of sharing what these products are about, sharing the opportunity to take back control of your health and your, you know, doing what it does with these products. I'm not going to go into that, but this is all it demonstrates. And when you do it and do it and over and over and over again with people, then you oftentimes end up on the leaderboard because of just simply that from doing it. So we have a number of people on the leaderboard. So let's recognize those from the month of September. So ending the number uh, uh, for the month of September at number 24 out of the top 25 is Carrie Beamer out of Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Andrews, who's brand really brand new, enrolled how maybe a month ago, yeah. six weeks mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's a new associate, actually. So he's enrolled, I think, three or four people this month um, at number 21. Uh, Steve and Jenny Todd at number 20. At, you know, they're very familiar with being on the leaderboard and have been for years. Which and so and this shows consistency. that they're, they're a part of their leadership. Alice, you just watch what they do and do what they do. They're still working on their own individual business, just like we so are. So they have been in the business, like me. Uh, about the same time as me, Lisa's ahead of, of, all, of all of us, but um, it's by a year. This month, it's our anniversary month. This is our anniversary month. Yes, it it's is. my anniversary month. Anyway, so, um, but what it, what it says for people like the Tots, who are, um, you know, ambassadors who are actually working this on a daily and have a team to lead, but what they recognize is that there are people, well, like Alice, for example, uh, Alice and Scott, who are here tonight for the first time, they haven't introduced them to Zelise in just the last little while. And um, as a result of that, they've enrolled them. So that's a part of that to get them their first product experiences and are in the process of being a product user, you might say, having their Zelise experience with product. So anyway, we do want to recognize those like them who have been around a while, like us, who continue to carry the message to people on the everyday, right. on the everyday, on the everyday. And that's what this represents. So Marsha Smith out of New York, who's not 10. been with us that long, but she's number 10, she's really proud of Marsha. Another nurse who, 
never saw herself, I don't think, ever sharing these products. No. no, never saw herself as doing that. And here she is on the leaderboard. And then we're number two. We finished number two uh, uh, this month, and we're really happy about that. So um, we worked hard. Guys. We did work I mean, like, hard. Can we just say how many we were enrolled? Yeah. I mean, like, we don't normally say this. Okay. But I'm going to tell you what it took this month to be number two on the leaderboard. We enrolled 11 people this month, new this month. Jump starts. Jump starts, mostly jump starts. But I'm just saying that's, we, we don't usually tell you what we do, but I think it's appropriate tonight um, to talk, just to say that's what it was. We enrolled 11 new people personally. Now, after six years with Lisa and five years with me, you would think, well, where are those people coming from? And so that's another lesson, but they come from our everyday life mm -hmm. and uh, they come from relationships. They come from new people we encounter. We just don't get to encounter them on the beach like Steve and Jenny Todd get to do down in Perdido Key, Pensacola. But exactly, we do have the beautiful hills of Arkansas. So anyway, that's the leaderboard. Really proud of all of you. Want to recognize that. Then on the other side is what's called our retail uh, retail volume for September. And you're going to once again hear some familiar names. But you know, Gina Adams out of Indiana just called last week and said, "Hey, I got some people." Listen. These are people who've been around a while and all of a sudden they call and say, we've got some volume we want to do. And that's great. Brett Sauter's new out of Ohio. Uh, he's actually under Carrie, right? right? And so that's mm -hmm. how Carrie gets on the leaderboard. Under Debbie Ray. So, under Debbie Ray, mm -hmm. right? Uh, who's this? Angela. Angela Mitchell out of Alabama, mm -hmm. number 12. Steve and Jenny Todd, number 10. Okay. Uh, Wright Parkway Dental out of... Uh, Fort Walton Beach, um, that once again, the number Todd's six. leadership, number six. And then Blue Angel D uh, Dental, which again is the Todd's, number two, and all of the lease. So, you know, they have a lot of, you know, some outlets, but they also have a team of people that are ordering products. So we just want to recognize them. So when you're a team builder, you have the ability to build the team any way you want. Y you can actually build with just customers. And, and that's a very valid way to have people that are recurring orderers um, on your team. Um, you can also just really encourage people to share just casually. Um, that's a very viable way uh, to build a team. But when you're building with team builders, team builders are going to have a collection of different kinds of people. And what I like about the leaderboard is it's you versus you. This is a biomarker of your individual activity just relative to the Zelice Nation. And it's a combination of people who are enrolling new business and people who are ordering to distribute their business through another business usually, through, through a retail office, through a, a practice of some type. So it's kind of two different kinds of biomarkers, all part of your average team builder who's building this. But the one thing that you can control yourself, and Lisa and I were talking about it today, just something that we wanted to make a point, just to remind everyone about. And for the new people, you know, this is maybe new information, um, but it'll make sense. It's like, what can you control? You can't control the number of people that you enroll. You can't control that. You can't. But you can set a goal to en enroll a certain number of people each month. And then you take the actions you can control that. You take the actions to communicate with enough people to achieve that goal. And I'll tell you that Lisa and I have a goal. We don't always meet it. But our personal goal is to introduce, reconnect, follow up with people. And our goal is to, is to enroll 10 new people every month. That's our personal goal. And so this month we met it. And um, sometimes we re reward ourselves when we hit our goal of 10 and uh, actually give give it, it triggers for us then the opportunity to be more giving to someone else and so we actually give away an opportunity if, if we reach our goal each month so we're incentivized by our own income but also we're incentivized within our goal setting to once we reach that goal to say oh we reached our goal we get to give something away now like something of significance so but we're respond we so the point is this what i can control i can control my goal i can control my effort toward my goal i can control the time and energy invested in it i can control my attitude about it uh what i can't control is the response of other people i can't control that um but uh anyway so 
that's a part of the lessons of learning how to expand a business of this nature if you desire to expand a business of this nature. So very well said. Yeah. Okay. So again, about the end of the month, um, we define something called rank in this business. And a lot of times people are not really familiar with what is rank. And, and I'll tell you that as a team builder, it is the one term that describes your commitment to your own growth. And so by that, we have the rank of associate, Hal mentioned that Steve Andrews became a new associate. That's somebody who has an active uh, new user on their right with an auto ship and also on their left. So that's, that's the definition of an associate. Uh, somebody who's a community ambassador is somebody who has generated a thousand BV and at least three enrollments with that thousand BV. And I want to recognize Marcia Smith, who just joined us. I think Marcia's here. She's perfect timing. And I want to introduce you to Marcia. And I just, I have so much respect. She's actually one of my peers as a, as a nurse coach. Um, and she has her own uh, nurse coaching practice. She deals a lot with stress management and uh, she's very, very eloquent. She's really good at what she does. But she, like me, had never really built a business before. And so it felt really awkward and foreign. And when she understood that she was really close this month to community, she did at the end of the month what it took to hit the goal. So Marsha, I just want you to introduce yourself and tell everybody why is the lease for you. But you got to turn your light on because we can't see your face. You're backlit. There, there you, you go. go. All right. Okay, Marsha, <laughs> unmute and just say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. And why is the lease for you, Marsha Smith? As a consumer? As a consumer. Okay, so as a consumer, um, it just made perfectly sense to me being someone that believes in integrative health and wellness. And um, it, 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 the product actually hit on some of my own health and wellness um, factors that I was looking to improve, especially bone growth, because I do have some osteopenia and I had a little arthritis setting into my right hip and my right knee. So, um, that was actually corrected pretty quickly. I don't know about the bone growth, but I'm, I'm hoping that I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing it. So hopefully the next time I get a DEXA scan, it's there. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and then also the testimonials of like all the people that are here and also just by listening to a lot of these calls, the testimonials, it's like the power of plants. Um, I wish I would have known more about it, you know, 20 years ago, I probably would have went on a different traje trajectory at all costs with my own, um, career, but here I am now trying to reinvent everything that I do <laughs> for the next 30 years, I hope at least. So that's why I became a consumer. And then it just made sense to me at this point as well to be a business builder um, because I retired a couple of years ago from nursing. I'm still pretty young. And, you know, I was looking for avenues of some income that I could do for my own house you know, based on my own hours. And after meeting Lisa and listening to her story and just the whole um, Zelise community, it was like, I just need to kind of keep committing and recommitting and seeing where this takes me. So, well, we're really proud of you, Marcia, for hitting community because you really didn't know what it was. And so we wanted to kind of celebrate you. Thank you. And um, also I want to just shout out because you're in Buffalo, New York. You're a long way from where we are in Arkansas. A long way. A long way from Pensacola. You a know, long way from everybody. She's starting a new geography, really, for this Team Unlimited. And uh, there's some comfort, as Christina will talk about, when you have a collection of people who have common experience and you can share your voices together. Judy Baker and Susan Everett, those guys know. And Karen, uh, you know, we've all been in the same Indiana market together. There's power in that. When you're starting this, team from another location without those voices it takes a lot of 
it takes a lot of strength and it takes a different kind of mindset. So I just want to shout out to you, Marsha, for catching the vision and, you know, doing the work and in order to get this thing started there. So we're really proud of you. Thank you. You know, there, so the comfort in the numbers of being physically close enough to one another where you can get, you know, face to face within the same space uh, is, has been something that, that we were able to do a lot more of prior to uh, 2020, March of 2020, and all the things that happened since then, we are beginning to get back to that. We're going to talk a little bit about that here in, in a few minutes. But as I look on the screen right now, <clears throat> it really, um, it, it's still the Indiana market, a little bit of this Northwest Arkansas market, uh, the Indiana, Kentucky market. There, there are those of you who are, who can still get, you know, you, you're close enough to each other, you can see each other. And when you have events like what Christina had here locally, uh, is about to have more there in Indiana, you can come together. Um, but for many of you, we got California, we got Georgia, we got um, Orlando, Orlando. Yeah. We Kayla's got uh, out there in Pennsylvania. Dan, Dan, Dan's in California. Uh, who Kristen's else? Kristen's in Atlanta. Yeah, Kristen's in Atlanta. Anyway, and we got Suzanne and 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 Wendy out in another part of Cal you know you can be in California and still be very far from a lot of people. So. Um, anyway, but the fact that we come together on elevation like this twice a month is a part of that connecting. It's so we think it's so important. That's why we do it. We are here not for us, really. We're here for you, and it's an opportunity for us to connect with you. But really, our labor of love is to give you a place to connect and um, to connect with a team of people that are pulling together and walking together. And though you all are part of our team many of you don't really have a team of people yet. And a part of that is for you to develop that team and to serve them the way that we serve you. And so that's super, super important. And then we'll continue to provide this kind of platform as well as coming out to you as we've often done and we'll continue to do. So um, anyway. So I, I want to continue to recognize. Yeah, man. Because uh, we're very aware of who is working at the yes, end of the month. Yes, we month. are. We and are very aware of who's working at the it, end. It, of it kind of becomes love language and toward when, us. Toward yeah. us, yeah. that when people are like, "Hey, you know, um, it was really Patty Bug that texted me, and Patty just joined us, and she's like, she hey, the call. yeah, she was, well, yeah, no, she, yeah, she's she's been a member of our team. I, in fact, I'm I'm gonna have introduce her here in just a minute, but I want you just to hear from Patty. A lot of people don't know that Patty. The reason that Patty is is on our team is she was kind of part of bringing Jenny and Steve um, into the, our team. And so what I love about the team builder is that we didn't know Jenny and Steve. I didn't know Patty if it wasn't for the person who in, introduced her and who introduced her. And so Patty not only was working at the end of the month, she enrolled several people uh, to help her clinch some, tr some tr trip volume. But she attended the regional meeting that we're gonna we're gonna talk about. So Patty, are you there? Can you just introduce yourself and tell us why is Elise? You got that screen thing. <laughs> There's Patty, but you're you're still muted. You're still muted. You're muted, Patty. <laughs> She's trying. She's trying. You don't have to be a master of technology to build this business. We'll come back to you, Patty. Okay, we'll come back. We'll come back to you, girl, because we shout can't, us out. We can't hear you. Gone. Anyway, I was wanted to shout out to Patty, and then also wanted to shout out to Debbie Ray, who's in Nashville, and uh, she had a very, very big goal as well, and had been really working with Luis, who is our development of sales. Um, he's he's an amazing guy who has really been made himself available to help people understand, like if you have a numbers goal, like what does that mean. And so she, you know, Debbie also had been working with Luis, working on trip volume. And uh, when they relaxed the generational requirement to actually get the double generational bonus and get trip volume, Debbie was like cha-ching. She, she got it. She was working uh, toward the end of the month. So I wanted to really shout out for her as well. Yeah. And then the next one we want to recognize uh, has become like, this was really special. Um, now, special only in that we knew what it took for them to get there, and um, and that is Jean and Lorena Workmeister, who re-ranked, and for those of you who know what that means to hit a rank, 
you have to hit a certain volume with certain criteria uh, within the company. And it's a, it's truly a measuring point. And we look at that every month for ourselves and for our team people. But the Workmeisters hit City Ambassador a couple of, a year and a half or so ago, or maybe two, for the first time during one of the peak points of Zalise. They hit it during kind of one of those shoot up months. And they were recognized for it. And that was great. But then, you know, the volume drops back, as is the nature of business. Um, and it's been quite a while since they've been able to hit that rank. But they have been stepping up. They they have been on the advisory council. They've been serving all of you by being on that advisory council, which is taking a lot of time and energy, late nights. They have been doing that besides also helping their team. And so this month, uh, late Saturday night, I said, text me if you hit it. And I got a text probably around 10, 15 or so from Lorena and Jean that they had re-ranked for the first time at City Ambassador um, in a very long time. And so we just want to applaud you guys. We're really proud of you. Um, you guys are becoming the leaders, I think, that you've always wanted to be but didn't believe that you could be. And both of you are. And so we just have huge, huge respect and love. Um, congratulations for you all. And I just want all of you to know that what they did in our doing, it's not a super high rank, but city ambassador is the key rank in all of Zelis. It is the foundational key rank for you to help people begin to earn income and to make a difference in your, in your, in, in their own individual lives. But when you're a city ambassador, you're impacting your world around you. And so it is the key. Uh, we talk about area ambassador, which is a higher rank because you earn more money, you get qualified for your Jeep, and it opens up some more commissions. But to really make an impact, city ambassador is the key, key uh, one. And that's, you know, a third of what the volume required to hit area to get the Jeep bonus. So when someone hits it on our team, whether for the first time or re-ranking, we just, we're like, we're popping balloons. We're, 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 you know, we're, we're not dancing naked or nothing, but we're doing all kinds of celebration. And uh, we're really, really proud of y'all for hitting that re-rank because sometimes re-ranking to something you've hit before is really one of the hardest things to do. And uh, cause you can it's get just, discouraged. It's a mental game. It, it really is. You, when, when you feel really good when you hit a new rank, but when you, your volume drops off, you're like, well, am I not good anymore? Yeah. I remember asking myself that question. You know, if I'm good when my, my when my volume goes up, am I still good if my volume's not as high? So, Lorena and Jean, very briefly, I just would love for you to tell us why Zelise. Uh, I I would not everybody knows you guys. You have a very powerful story. So let's see who's going to talk first here. Uh, I think I'll start. There you go. Yep. Go, Jean. Yeah, you know what? We just really appreciate all you guys. You know. There, Hal and Lisa, you guys are the best, really are. We just, uh, you know, we couldn't be where we're at without you. So I, ju I just want to get that up front. And also, it was kind of nice the other night. I got woke up from a sleep from somebody at corporate um, congratulating us on, you know, re-ranking. It's like to have Bo Short call you, you know, that was pretty awesome. But yeah. Uh, so what was now, your first conversation, Gene, with Bo when you met him in Dallas when you went there for the leadership conference? I just, I walked up to him and I told him that you intimidate the hell out of me. That's what you told him straight up, didn't you? you straight up. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, we had chats. We had a lot of chats off and on, texts. You know, I mean, Bo, Bo's a good guy. He, he really is. And, you know, I, I'm proud to know him and uh, even more proud to be, you know, kind of mentored a little bit by him. But more, um, I, I really look forward to our time together, too, Hal. So thank you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we we had a lot of good work this past month. Um, it was rough. We also had a lot of issues pop up, too. So it, it wasn't a cakewalk by no means. But you know what? Through God and, uh, you know, all our friends supporting us, praying for us, you know, we're, we're through here. So, and I'll let Lori get a word in. I'm speechless. 
Oh no! Okay, isn't it? Get a picture. <laughs> write this down. Wow, it, it, that is awesome. That's beautiful. <laughs> it it's just been a really rough month, and um, actually, this was done pretty much yeah. in ha the first yeah. half of the month. Yeah. And then the second half of the month, I've been MIA because I've been taking care of uh, Jean's, um, actually our cousin. And so I've been in the hospital at the hospital uh, since September 14th on my birthday. <laughs> it was a great birthday, yeah. um, you know, but, you know, you do what you got to do. I do have some phone numbers from the hospital, yep. but um, I just have not been uh, able to do anything with that. So I'm, we're going to probably hopefully get everything settled and then, yeah. you know, go get, get back on course. You're good. Well, you guys will see y'all y'all bought your tickets early for the, oh, yeah. in October here. Well, in two weeks in Dallas. The first night. And so here's the deal. Uh, do you mind if I share what it takes for y'all to get there? Uh, no, no, go ahead. So these this couple has to rent a car. They have to rent a car every time they go from St. Louis to Dallas or even from St. Louis to Evansville. They do not have a dependable enough vehicle to safely get them there. And so they have to rent a car. They, on top of paying the gas in that car, on top of paying the hotel and the tickets to get there, they bought not just tickets for themselves, but they wanted to make sure that their team members had the lower price. So they bought extra tickets um, for their team members to get the lowest price, the upfront cost to get to the event. Um, and they don't get point. You don't get business volume points for renting a car. You don't get business volume points for paying for a hotel room. You don't get business volume points for buying a ticket to go to the event. You don't get extra points for buying extra tickets for your team to make sure they get a better price. That is leadership. That's taking responsibility, not only for your business yourself, but for your team. So, you know, and they, I just, I'm just so proud of them. I can't even not get teary about it because this was a big deal for them to re-rank. And honestly, it's big for Zalise for a couple like Jean and Lorena to re-rank and uh, after all the company's been through and we're turning that we're, you know, we're turning up in our growth, and it takes people like them to make it happen. It's not about us, guys. Zalise, Zalise needs us. We're aware of that, How and Lisa. But more importantly, they need you. They need you more than they needed us at this point. And they need you to do what the, like the workmeisters have done. And so um, as, as, as important as what everybody's done this month, I will tell you from our perspective, what Jean and Lorena have not only done this month, but in months leading up to this. And so like she said, to my point in the beginning, a month is a single unit. It is a whole unit in and of itself from day one to the last hour. And like she said, you know, they reached this rank this month because they worked in the first of the month. They didn't wait till the end or to see what would happen. They went to work in the beginning of the month. Then they had life happen in the middle of the month. But then on the last day of the month, they're saying, what do we got to do to close the month? And they made it happen. They just were there to make the, it happen. The other thing I want to tell you, both Jean and Lorena, I'm really proud of you guys know your back office, you know your volume goals, you know where you are. Uh, you ask me when you need a three-way phone call, if you have you know, a question, just a very small question last night, you know, when you were placing your order, but it's just taking responsibility for those kind of details for your business that really is an inspiration to us. Yeah. So thank you for being who yeah. you are. So awesome. Let's give them all a big round, clap, clap, clap. All right. Who else did you have? Well, and so I, I, I want to talk about just um, sometimes the end of the month, some of the lessons can be pain and frustration. Anybody have kids? <laughs> Cats? Dogs. <laughs> Dogs. Rabbits. Rabbits. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it can really hurt when, when you have spent time and you care deeply about business and people and you get ghosted or... Uh, somebody doesn't call you back for that order, or you get that call that your dad is in the hospital and that his wife is just as sick as Christina faced this month. And that, you know, you're hosting a major regional event for the first time 
in uh, Indiana, and I'm not there to help for the first time. And what leadership is, is stepping up and doing it anyway. And so I want to recognize Christina for just her leadership. And she has, uh, you know, she's just, she's been a warrior in her mindset and uh, just Christina, I want to introduce you and have, have you share wise Elise and um, just tell us a little bit about what you just did and hosted with the regional summit. Uh, why is the lease? The lease is a platform, honestly, that has given me the power to take control of my life in a way that nothing else has. And um, for me, that is personal growth, um, figuring out uh, how to help people. This month with my dad really um, put that, I guess, pin in the calendar that I'm an advocate. You know, um, it was it was really cool at the event over the weekend Josh Kemp stands up and he has everybody say, I'm a healer and everyone on this call is a healer, but it really, really gave me a new perspective this month that I'm an advocate and I know more than just the average person out there. We all really do. And, and it's our job to stand in that middle spot right now for people. And I personally did not hit my rank goal this month. Um, but I'm able to right. but I'm able to step back and realize that because of this platform, I was able to take Zoom calls for my business while I was sitting at the hospital all week with my dad. And, um, you know, just I was I've been able to connect with um, organizations this month that two years ago I would have never dreamed of being attached with. So, I mean, it's it really is that personal, you know, strength and determination and perseverance that you go back to the drawing board if something doesn't work and you figure out how to make it work next time. So it really is a learning curve every month to figure out how to make it, you know, right there to the end. Um, I started this month at the beginning of the month, you know, texting people, talking to people, having one-on-one -on -one meetings and things like that. And sometimes no matter how many of those conversations that you have, it just doesn't happen by the end of the month. I've, I've learned enough to know that as with follow-up that next month, is going to come out of the gate that much bigger and that much harder, not just with the Dallas event that we've got coming up, which is going to be huge for business as a whole. Um, but it's just, it really is perspective. So even if you don't hit your goal, don't get so frustrated that you can't see it for the next month, go back to the drawing board, figure out what you learned for yourself this month and really build on that. Cause that's going to be the foundation for whatever you do after this. Well, and Christina, when I talked to you, um, I don't know if it, it all runs together now, but it was either late last night or or this morning. I think it was last night, actually. And you're like, you know, if you don't hit your goal, you're experiencing personal growth. And sometimes that growth can be painful. I had a mentor once that said, if you don't cry about this business, you don't care enough. I feel bad. <laughs> and, and it's not fun to be that emotionally wrapped up in, in something, but we understand that, um, you know, it, it can be. And so I love your, your whole attitude about personal growth. And if you don't win, you grow. And so we want to recognize you for your leadership and what you did to host that event. Yeah, that's right, for sure. And so I just want to say a comment about that. You know, product takers don't cry about this business, about Zelise. You know, they, they're grateful for the product. But if you're on this call, maybe not like, you know, Alice and Scott for the first time, you may not know really what you're getting into here at all. <laughs> It, but, you know, you, you say, man, we just product takers. That's all. We just want to have a good product experience. And that's great. But at some point, if you stick around with us and you want to build a business and help other people, you'll cry about, you'll cry. You will. You'll cry out of joy. You'll cry out of appreciation for others. And there'll be times that you'll cry out of frustration. It's like, why do people not get this? I don't understand why they can't get this. You know, those kinds of things. But, um, you know, this calls for people who really are giving themselves to their business and to, and, and to help other people. So anyway, that puts in perspective why we set goals and why it's a challenge sometimes. We can reach our goal this month. It's uh, like our overall goal. We did our enrollment goal, but it requires more than just us for us to, to, to reach the volume goals for our entire team because like we can reach our goals, but there's a team goal that requires everybody else to reach theirs too. And, so. and in all fairness, what's going on right now, I don't know if you guys have paid attention, but they've bonus double- generational bonus for 5% growth month over month and triple generation for a 10% growth. 
And that is a lot. That is a lot of growth. That is more than the company is growing right now. So it's it's a lofty goal. We we get that. For us to achieve. For us to achieve. But at the same time, it's it's, it's worth, the worth it. Yeah. It's worth the effort. And so uh, before we talk a little bit more in terms of just the lessons learned, I wanted to recognize Susan Everett because Susan, um, there she is. She's acting all surprised. But Susan, you know, you um, have also had obstacles in your life and um, you really would never, ever admit it, but you are the one person who charges into a dark room, even if you're scared of the dark, your courage, and you attended that event, that regional event, and you brought your team with you and kind of a team guest as well with Judy, and uh, which was a huge commitment because you've got a lot of responsibilities. And so I wanted you to kind of introduce yourself, why is Elise for you? And uh, tell us just your takeaway from, from the experience. Um, okay, so my name is Susan Everett, and uh, why is the least for me is uh, I've always been interested in uh, you know taking control of my own health. And a matter of fact, uh, my friend Rick uh, laughs about the reason I have the primary care doctor I have is because I can tell him what to do, and he. he <laughs> but but so I mean it fit it fit with me when I started hearing about it. But then of course I mean a lot of people have heard the story that um, <clears throat> that my friend Carol has Parkinson's and. And uh, she was pretty well down and out. And the doctor had given her only a year to two to live when I stuck a uh, little tube of, or whatever you call it, a little dropper of CBG in her mouth and said, here, take this. And it turned her life around. Uh, does she still have Parkinson's? Yes. And does she still have problems with it? Yes. But at that time, that was in, that was four years ago, four and a half years ago. And he gave her a year to two years to live. And so, you know, when you see that in somebody that you really care about, that really makes a difference in your life. And it's not just her, though. I mean, it's people on this call. I mean, there's just story after story after story of people that you hear that it's making a difference for them. So, you know, I can read all the science that I can read. And, and I love that because then I can talk to the other skeptics about it. But what moves you emotionally is to hear a story from somebody that how it affected their life and the difference it's made. I mean, Lorena's story is is awesome. Uh, and there's others on this call, their, their story about what it did in their life. So that's awesome. So the, I, you know, if there's an event close to me, I'm going to go to it. And, and even some that aren't close to me. And if I can drag people with me, I'm going to drag them. And Judy's not her to drag. You say, hey, we're going. She says, okay, what time? You know, and, and so... So that was great. And she, I mean, she's been a real trooper in this. She's been very helpful with me and she's, you know, she's working. It's a totally, Judy is a retired teacher. So this is a totally different world for her also. I mean, I'm retired corporate America and I'm used to bossing people around. I'm not used to trying to sell things to people. And uh, so Judy's a retired teacher. So it's a totally new thing for her. Um, the other person that went with us is a very new, excuse me, my nose itches. The other person that went with us, uh, I thought she was going to be on the call tonight. She's a very new team member. She's a chaplain at uh, one of the local hospitals, but she's starting to see what happens in, in you know in her own life. As a matter of fact, she kept saying, "I'm not going to have anything to do with this unless it works for me." Well, it took the pain out of her arm immediately, and so now she's trying to learn more. And the reason I drag her to uh, drag her, but the reason I took her to this event was that same thing. She heard. Uh, you know, different people's stories of what it's meant to them and it and the changes it's made in their lives. And it just brings it alive to you. So I really feel sorry for you folks that live in Timbuktu compared to, you know, getting to an event. So get your flight and go to Dallas because that's your best way of, of getting in a complete energy boost. I mean, it's better than a bunch of caffeine. <laughs> Awesome, so it's Susan. not too late to get your tickets for Thank you, our event on uh, October the 14th. It's really two weeks, less than two weeks now for that Saturday. I think tickets are like $79. 69. 69. Um, let us know if you want to go here at the last minute. You don't have a ticket. We might be able to hook you up. Uh, I think we got a, some extra rooms. We got a couple Beth Plumley shared has, rooms. Yeah. Yeah. And so Patty Bug, I think might. We're going to require female, female, male, male roommates. But yeah. other than that, you know, come if you don't have a room, you can share with them, bunk up. This is the kind of event you just want to get to however possible, yeah. even at the last minute. So oh, perfect. Yeah. 
So I wanted to just give you guys a visual and then I'm going to um, have Hal kind of walk you through almost an imagery exercise. But the visual that I want to you to I want to share with you a, a gentleman who I had the privilege of hearing live. His name is Eric Weinmayer. And some of you guys might have heard of him before, but he is the only, to my knowledge, he's the only blind man who has summited Everest. And that is, um, it was like kind of shocking to think, oh my gosh, you know, like how does a blind guy like climb Everest? And he he's now a motivational speaker and he's an athlete, obviously he's super fit. But I'll never forget when he told his story and he says, you know, everybody wants to know, like, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? He said, we're literally tied together with ropes when we summit Everest. And he said, you can't see very far because, you know, it's snow and blizzard. And he goes, you can just see the next step. So nobody can see when you summit Everest, but you're tied to your team. And that team, each of you have to move together and everybody has a specific role. And so if, you know, if you're new to the business or even if you've been here for a while, when I was in my first business, my first 13 years, it took me four years to find my team. I mean, like it, it was not an overnight thing at all. And that's a whole separate story. But when you think about what our team, what Team Unlimited is, and then what your team that you're creating is, you're literally tied together with ropes, blind, making moves together. Yeah. So in a recent quote that I, that I, it's actually attributed to Einstein, but I think it probably comes from the, you know, from the Bible or further back than that. But, the, but it says this, nothing happens until something moves. Nothing happens until something moves. And so when you think about that concept, just nothing happens for you in your business until you move, you have to move. And imagine setting out, just, just imagine with me, because all of you have actually done this with us in the lead. So using the analogy of climbing Everest, it doesn't have to be Everest, but it's a peak that is unfamiliar to you, where there are, yes, dangers, where, yes, there is a, a, excitement, there are challenges, your foot is slippery underneath you, you can't necessarily see where you're going, but you're tied to people who have been like a Sherpa who has been before you and knows the path and can lead. But imagine you're holding on to the rope and the people in front of you are stepping and stepping and, and, and the elements come and the cold comes and the elevation, it becomes harder to breathe as you move along. Now, what you have decided to do in the very beginning is to move from base camp. At any point, you could go back to base camp and sit and wait for the team to return. You could do that. But in a lot of people actually choose to do that. There are people who take for different reasons, sit in base camp and let other people, you know, take take the lead constantly. But if you are going to summit, you'll summit with people who know the way. If you're going to reach the goals, you'll be tied to the rope. You'll be walking hand in hand. You'll be led. You'll be encouraged. You'll be taught. You'll be you'll you'll be helped navigate difficult situations. And you'll do that. Now, here's the thing. Lisa and I have set up our base camp because of our business and where it is higher up the mountain than where most of you are. And yet we've cut the path and we've tied, we, we have a rope leading to where you are. The thing is this, that in order for you to build your business, you have to become the leader that leads a team. You have to stay attached to the rope of us, but we can't constantly be the ones that comes back and leads you out of base camp. You literally, if you're going to lead a team of people and generate income and make an impact, you have to become at some point the leader that says, my leaders are way up ahead of us. I'm going to stay attached to them but I'm going to choose to be one who leads a team of people and guides them and takes the responsibility of becoming that kind of next level Sherpa. Are we going to continue to do and encourage you and to, and to teach? Yes, of course we will. The analogy breaks down at some point, but hopefully, you know, what, what we understand is that, that without you moving, nothing happens for the people in your world. Without you taking action, 
nothing impactful happens for the people who only you will reach and guide and to lead up that challenge for them. So that there, there's that. Um, uh, so um, I think really that's probably, you know, and, and, and one of the opportunities for that really is to, to make it to Dallas and to come to that event. Because really, this could we, we're we're believing we're hoping that this event, um, the things that they're going to be talking about and unveiling there, being there present, is, is more valuable to you as a potential leader and believer than than um, than had you heard it second or third hand through us. Um, the energy of that, and so, you know, we're we're listen. There are multi level marketing direct selling businesses that promote these big events. Let me tell you something. If there's, if, if there's 150 to 200 people at this event, it'll be big. So this company is not big. We've been through some major, major challenges. We have the best products in the world. I personally believe that we now, as of the last few months, have the best corporate staff for this time in the life of a company. But I will also say that I believe that with our leadership and some others in your leadership, we we truly have the best opportunity to lead from the field and, and do some things that only you can do because it is such a small company with big dreams. So um, I guess the final thing I'm going to say, and this comes from The Art of War, the book of The Art of War, um, and that is this, that, that uh, uh, strategy without tactics, in other words, strategy, a goal, a dream, climbing the summit without critical tactics you can have a slow and painful growth towards success, but tactics without strategy is, is the noise before defeat. So you can have all the tactics and all the little details and that sort of thing that you kind of know what to do. You know, how sort of know how to contact, sort of know how to get in your back office, sort of know what the products are about. But if you don't have a dream and a strategy for yourself, like a big goal for victory, all the tactics that we do, really will will not end in victory for you or for the people in your world. So um, strategy and a desire and a goal and a dream to make an impact on the world is really more important than all the tactics we could provide for you. We're doing, we're trying to get the company and we ourselves are trying to provide better tactics and plans and tracks, but we could provide the best tools, promotionals, all the stuff, incentives, all the tactics, but if you don't have a personal desire and strategy to make an impact in your world through this business, uh, it's just, it's noise. It's truly just noise. And so, um, you know, we want to challenge all of you on this call to um, take the rope that we have provided and we continue to lead with, but realize that when you have that rope in your hand, your biggest responsibility is to impact the people that are following you. And that, that's really where it's at. So, and um, thank you for that. Hal. Yeah, it was really great. Uh, so, I wanted to also tell you guys that one month from now, when we're starting November, Zalise is going to be a completely different company than it is right now. And when is it going to change? It's going to change October 14th. There's going to be a product launch, and there's going to be some new strategies that are released, ways to summit. Everest, if you will, that are going to completely change this company, going to change the compensation uh, plan. And um, the companies gr companies grow during these product launches, during these new, new periods where for the first time in three years, we're literally going to bring everyone together to meet face to face. And we really want you guys to be part of that experience. It's going to really change everything in a positive direction. And it is a live only experience. There's no Zoom. There's no Zoom presentation. It is a be there or miss that event. Now, the information will eventually come out. We obviously. will have a, our next elevation call will be the Sunday night after, after, after um, elevation. We might be tired. I mean, night. after Empower. <laughs> no such thing. But I, I want you guys to, I want to leave you with hope that not only do each of you have this burning desire in you for a reason, you're here because there is greatness in you that is somehow those embers are, are become flames when we're together. 
that burning desire really, really means something. And each of you have the ability to not just bring people into this product culture to life-changing products, but each of you have the ability to surpass anything Hal and I have done and to impact, create beautiful ripples of goodness and rock your world. We, we would not be here if we didn't have that belief. And yet the path is to jump into the world of the team builder. I want you to take that seriously. Think about it. Think about what your goal would be and, and visualize, you know, if failure was not an option, what would you wish for? Would that be city ambassador? Would that be area ambassador? Um, I, I want to finish just kind of on the humorous side. I had a mentor once when I told him how much I, I love the company. I love the products. And he goes, not this company. Not, company. It was my last company, yeah. 13 years, you know, four years until I was like, find my first team member. So I just collected customers until that time's a great way to start. But, and, and I told him, I, I, I loved the company. And, and he said, what's your best check? And I'm like, oh, that's kind of personal. You know, like who asks people how much money they make? And, and I, I was honest about it. He goes, no, he goes, you don't love this company. He goes, wait until you get your first $10,000 check. Then you'll love the company. So I'm just saying. Did you ever get one of those? I did. From them? I did. One time. One time. One time. <laughs> one time. Uh, yeah. And it, it's so true. You guys, the more <laughs> income that you earn serving people, the more you will fall in love with what we're doing here. And so we want all of you to taste that success and knowing the, the tears, the growth, just knowing that we're all connected, that same rope, we do it together. So thank you so much, Hal, You're, for yeah, leading, us, leading us up and down the mountain. And uh, how thank is that humorous? You. No, I was the one that was the my. You, you were humorous. Well, yeah, you know, you'll, you'll love it more when you make a ten thousand dollar check. That's okay. kind of funny. Yeah, I remember. I remember the first time doing remodeling a bathroom for someone, which you know, working with my physical body and making my first like twelve thousand dollar check. This was probably 15, 20 years ago. That was a lot of money to me. I, that is a lot of money. That was a lot of money. What happened to it? I was not ex well, <laughs> spent it on a lot of stuff. Anyway, um, I wasn't excited. I wasn't. You know why? Because I realized I really worked hard and broke my body down to make that money. And I'm like, and I gotta go do it again. Oh my God. And then my next job was like a third of that. And I've still busted my rear, busted my hands, my back, my knees to get that. And when I got into this business and really started making some money, I was like, now it's gone up and down, but I'm like, we can always get that back. Right. And it's residual in nature. I don't, I mean, anyway, so that's, I thought mine was funnier than yours. But anyway, okay. we've kept these people long enough and the Chiefs are playing. So I'm going to go watch. Okay. The Chiefs play. Chiefs, hey guys, thank you for chiming in tonight. It was great to see you guys. Alice and Scott, thank you for being here for the first time. Uh, it was great to see Chef Sharon. That's Michelle, called diving in. Y'all didn't Kayla, come in with your toe in the water. Y'all jumped in. Tonight. Kathy Talbot, all these beautiful faces. We will see you guys on uh, the Freedom Call tomorrow night. And let's chart a course for a big October. What and we'll say? see those of you who are going to be in Dallas and Dallas here in a couple of weeks. So excited to see y'all. Lots of love to everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.